This is Lotus Comic Express. I'm here live with Lyle. I hope I pronounced that right. Blackburn. It's a tough one, but you got it. All right. <laughs> now, he's a legendary monster hunter. And I say that very, very awesomely because, I mean, he's been on Animal Planet and obviously Destination America, guys. Not to mention, on the side, he's an author. He's coming out with new two new books, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, there's two books coming out soon. Uh, one of those, I, I also write for the horror magazine Room Org, and they've been yes, putting sir. out a uh, special edition library uh, books, and I'm, I'm doing one of those. It's, uh, the theme would be cryptozoology or legendary monsters in horror. So it, that's a cool project. That comes out uh, sometime this summer, 2016, and I'm in works on another book as a follow-up to my previous two books. Now, with uh, the books that are, that are just now coming out for, for you, congratulations, by the way. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And do you have any release date on the, on the actual books that are coming out? And can you tell us a little bit about that without breaking any contracts or anything like that? No, uh, yeah, I'm not sure of the release date of the my newest one. My, my two previous books, The Beast yeah. of Boggy Creek, uh, that came out a few years ago, uh, has been quite successful. And then I followed that up with one called Lizard Man which was a strange sort of creature from the Black Lagoon yeah. case out of South Carolina, which it, it always intrigues me. Small town, uh, swampy area, people reporting monsters. And so those make interesting stories, although, it, you know, there's no ultimate proof of this stuff. Right. But, but this is, I mean, this is what people are reporting. The police were involved. So those cases always intrigue me. And, you know, that translates to the TV shows that I've been on, like, Monsters and Mysteries in America, where you have everyday people reporting sightings of s things that people say don't exist, and, right. and those uh, often are scary situations. Obviously, if you saw something like that in the woods or uh, or whatever. So you were your own monster squad, sir. Somewhat, yes, yes. That is awesome. As a kid, you know, I would be like envious of my own self <laughs> to That's to follow these cases. That is very like. How did you actually get into monster hunting itself? I'm, you know, I mean, is there a story right. back behind that or? Well, I mean, it was kind of interesting. You know, I've always been a, a horror movie fan. Sure. You know, and when I was a kid, I just gravita gravitated towards those subjects. But the one thing it really actually scared me. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I knew horror movies were, you know, make believe. You know, Frankenstein was a guy in a costume. But truly, what scared me was things like Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster. Uh, you know, I just. To, if you saw something like that in the woods, uh, right. it, it just really freaked me out. So I've always been uh, fascinated with those subjects. And later on, as I started writing, I went, real, really when I was writing for Rue Morgue, I uh, was looking for subjects that intrigued me. And that's kind of what got me going along the books, uh, because there was an old movie called The Legend of Boggy Creek, where people reported sightings of a Bigfoot-like creature in southern Arkansas about three hours from here. Right. And, and it was based on true reports, and I thought, you know, I want to see as an adult what, what, you know, what was that all about, and that's what propelled me to write the book. I found there's a huge story to it, and kind of tie into a horror movie, and perfect, you know. So the monsters are they more like creep show, or are they more like supernatural kind of th kind of stuff? The supernatural, like they base all of their episodes on like true true events. Right. I mean, it would be you know? much closer to that. I mean, where. You know, all this kind of gets lumped into what, you know, paranormal or, right. you know, ghosts, UFOs, uh, cryptids, you know, unexplained creatures. So, yeah, definitely more in that vein. And, you know, That's I cool. specialize in, in the monsters, the cryptids, as they call them. Well, I mean, you do a fantastic job on TV. I mean, you really do. You've, you've got an essence about you, a, a persona almost. Right. Once you're on the t television shows that you do. And, I mean, I saw you on parts of Animal Planet, and then I also saw you, you know, doing what you do with the monsters and all of that, talking about that. Yeah. You have a lot of knowledge under that area, man. I mean, you really do. So, I got to know, as a geek, I got to ask some geeky questions, so bear with me. No problem. No proton packs, right? No, no, I, I just, you know. No EKG meters? No, no. No, like man, I, I, no, no requirement for that thus far, so. And we can debunk the whole, like, looking in the closet and there's a monster? I don't know, man. People report some strange things. So I, I never uh, say never and never uh, underestimate where some strange 
creature may lurk. I got you. Well, what is the best monster story that you have that you, you've personally experienced? Uh, well, you know, I, in researching these cases, I yeah. like to go in the places where people report seeing these. And, of course, when you're dealing with creatures, Bigfoot-like creatures and things, I mean, these are mostly in the woods, in the sure. swamps. And I love southern swamps. So, you know, I've been out in, in many dangerous places uh, where... You know, I mean, you had to deal with other monsters, so to speak, alligators and, and wild hogs and things like that. And uh, But on one occasion, we were up on a bayou late at night, 2 a.m., and you, we hear this very, very strange howl coming up, maybe 200 yards away. Or, you know, heard it once. Is that coyotes? No, it sounds much stranger. And you, we heard it a couple more times and, you know, ruled out any known animal that we, we knew. And... Uh, it went silent, so we stayed there for a little while and then uh, decided to head back to our camp. So we went down about half a mile in this bayou, down the channel, got out. We weren't at our camp maybe one minute yeah. before we heard that same howl right across the bayou channel. And whatever it was, I don't know if it followed us, but it knew we were there and it come that close. And, uh, I mean, chill bumps on, uh, you know, on the, on the neck, on the arms. Yeah whatever that was and I still cannot explain what that animal was it was a huge kind of ramping up of a howl uh, did it three more times went silent and needless to say we we uh, we didn't sleep too much that night uh, right you know so so those are the experiences that are that you can get out of this by going in the places and getting that sort of real time I mean I'm in a horror movie right. type feeling so it's it's very cool so i mean with all of that with all of the stories that you you've encountered you've experienced um yeah, let's say that hypothetically and realistically there's people that encounter like hauntings at their houses and stuff like that do you have any advice on what they can do if their their house is haunted or any, any of that i mean certainly there's a lot of groups these days yeah. that specialize in these problems if you want to call them problems right. I mean if my house is haunted I'd think that's awesome <laughs> but right. I mean it's not funny to some people and that can be very frightening and, and dis very frightening. Yeah, disturbing I thought I'd ask you. I right mean, and, you might know. and certainly I mean you could call I mean you can I mean you can google this and find some group in your area that's probably got some experience okay. they may have the proton packs or whatever it requires <laughs> right? that's necessary to uh, cleanse your area of any unknown uh, entities that may be haunting you so now with the book that's coming out and your release date and all of that you know I personally I'm, I, I'm excited to read it once it actually releases and you know what you do on TV with the personification that you do when you know when you're acting when you're just you because you're just kind of you being real, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I don't. it's not a big stretch to do these kind of things because right. it's literally what I do in real life to research these stories and right. talk to witnesses that say they've seen something strange. So, you know, these shows, they... I love the realness yeah, about it, though. Yeah, right, and, and that's... You know, and, and that you can't find that on other real television shows, like reality TV and stuff like that, where they're just being real. You know? Yeah, reality TV is a yeah, subjective term, and and there's you know, there's authentic things that that uh, that go on, and those are you know those are my favorite kind of shows. You know, there's fiction shows, Supernatural, the great show, and and right. then and then there's the real stuff, and this does go on in real life. And I would agree with you. Realistically, it really does go on in real life, whether people want to identify that to that or not. You know, and a lot of people don't because it scares them, you know? Yeah. And it is scary. I, I mean, I would agree with a lot of people when they say that. Sure. But, you know, not, you know, with being real about, like, what you do with the show, I mean, you put all of your heart and soul into the TV shows, your books, and all of that. Would you have any advice to, say, other artists and stuff like that or that, that are just now branching out? I mean, I would say just do, do what you you like you know yeah. do what follow your passions and that's where you're going to you're going to excel I mean it may not be today may not be tomorrow but in, in the future you know I'm you know fascinated by this kind of stuff all my life and I just follow 
what I enjoy, and hopefully someday uh, you, it pays off, whether it's that's film or books or TV right. or whatever it is. You know, just follow your heart. Well, yes, sir. Well, I really appreciate your time. Hey, man. It's a huge honor, Lyle. Thank you so much. No problem. Guys, come check out Lyle Blackburn. He's an amazing artist, actor, and author. I mean, that's like a three set right there, man. And come check him out. Is there a website that we can come check you out at, sir? Yeah, LyleBlackburn.com. E easy. Got you got it. You heard it here first from Mr. Blackburn. Come check out LotusComics.com, and we'll see you here real soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.